I wanted to talk a little bit about disease and pest pressure. Yeah. Because I feel like it's getting better every year. It is for me. For some things, yeah. for sure. Like, for instance, powdery mildew seems to be a lot less prevalent this year than I am at least used to. For me, what I've noticed is my pest pressure is way down. My disease, I'm still seeing like even a little powdery creeping up the base stems of my tomatoes. That's true. Actually, I have seen that Which now. is frustrating to see yeah. because I really, like I, I planned my tomato garden out this year in such a way specifically just to avoid disease. It wasn't even anything else. Yeah. But to me, what I've noticed is I have no significant pest pressure of any kind. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I had some aphids early on, and I, I attribute most of that to the rain, actually. Do you really? Because the soil was so wet yeah. that I think the plants like couldn't breathe, and then they get stressed, yeah. and then they get aphids. Yeah, um, it could be. But overall, less than I've ever seen before. Like They're not a problem, I would say. Like I see maybe a couple on some like my garlic chives, and that's yeah. about it. Yeah. But it is interesting about the powdery mildew because people are always like, if you water your plants from above, you're going to get mildew. Only drip irrigation mm -hmm. for both of us. Yeah. And there's no water splash up. It hasn't rained. Yeah. It just happens. Like sometimes yeah, you can't happens. really control it. Yeah, totally. I mean, the the reason that we don't have a lot of pest pressure right now is because we have given up control. Exactly. To the environment. Right. And so I'm very fortunate that I have the pond now in the backyard. Yeah. Which brings in bird life at a higher rate than maybe it would if there was no water feature. And it's a quite a nice water feature now. It's like yeah, very well is, planted yeah. out now. And you guys helped out with that. But what I've noticed is more species of bird um, of different sizes and style. So like some are ground foragers, some are hanging out on wires, some are in trees. And so, I mean, if you do the stats on some of these common bird species and how many pests they need to eat to survive, like even if you're talking like a bat, a bat will eat 2000 insects every night. So if you had Crazy. one bat yeah. in your garden, even one would cut down a significant amount of the pest pressure. So I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm curious if you've seen this in your garden, like bringing in the ability for the higher level species, right? Absolutely. It's, it's just like they will not let things get out of check. Yeah. And I've actually noticed that as well. I've had a lot of small birds and I'll see them jump around on my like leaves of my plants yeah. and peck at something. There's no fruit. They're not eating the leaves. Nothing. They're yeah. eating the bugs. And yeah. then the other thing I have recently, this year there's been a crazy amount of hawks mm -hmm. and I could hear them calling. They're all right near the, your house. They sit yeah. on my telephone poles, like two or three of them. Sometimes they sit on my trellis. And yesterday I was walking out in the garden and I saw this hawk swoop down right next to my corn patch fly off and it had a mouse in its mouth no way and i was like Dude, you saw it yeah i wish Dang, i could have captured that would have been so cool uh but yeah. between like dogs wild cats and yeah. these falcons and then little birds they've solved most of my problems and yeah. by doing nothing essentially creating a space for them to be able to come in and not shoo them away that's it spray anything and it is scary of course i think both of us gave up like this idea of control mm -hmm. like in the past couple of years and I think we've both seen a huge benefit from it. It's also yeah. cheaper. Well, it's <laughs> way cheaper. It saves Less you time. time. It, it saves yeah. you time. But also, I was just chatting with a podcast guest, and we were talking about birds in the environment. And the wild part about it is like, it is a build it and they will come. And it's w in the way in which you build will bring a specific species in. Mm. So like, if you don't have red or bright tubular flowers your hummingbird population just won't be right. as high. They might be around, but the fact that let's say I have the pond and then I also have some tubular flowers hanging around like the hollyhocks, for example, they'll yep. be around. Um, what's been interesting is I also have a hummingbird feeder. Yeah. They don't touch it. They really don't. And because yeah. they're getting enough from the rest of the environment. Uh, and, and then another weird thing is like, if you plant stuff and then don't solve the pest problem like the aphids yeah right and you mentioned this in a recent video you did yeah. where you're like my determined tomatoes have aphids and i don't even care and it's because you saw ladybug larvae yep. on which is obviously not a bird but similar idea yeah. two weeks later it was covered in ladybugs and yeah. almost all the aphids were gone and now the plant looks really healthy it's yeah. starting to ripen fruit and i basically just it's just scary because the initial desire is to overreact yeah and a lot of times as gardeners we want to do something yeah but I think sometimes the best part of gardening is to just be passive and let the like garden speak to you, essentially. Watch the full episode right here and subscribe for more new episodes every single week.